Hi, welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to share with you, how I replace this bulky laptop charger, to a modern USB-C power delivery charger, without breaking anything. This simple upgrade has made my life much easier, especially when working remotely, as I now only need to carry one charger for all my devices. And even use a power bank with my laptop on the go. Replacing your laptop charger with a USB-C to DC adapter is a straightforward process. But, it can be tricky to select the right components for the first time. With this guide, you can avoid wasting time and money on ordering the wrong components that just don't work. I'll show you how to choose the right components, that will fit and work perfectly with your old laptop. So, let's get started. To use USB-C with your old laptop, you'll need three things a USB-C to DC adapter, a USB-C cable, and a compatible charger. It's essential to ensure that all these components match your laptop's specifications in order to work. First, you need to know the power required to charge your laptop. You can find this information at the bottom of your laptop, or on the original power adapter. It should show the voltage in milliamp. For example on my laptop, the power requirements are listed as 20 volts, 2.25 amps. To calculate the minimum wattage requirement for your charger, you need to multiply these two values together. In this case, 20 multiplied by 2.25 is equal to 45. So I know that my laptop requires at least a 45 watts USB-C adapter. The next step is to determine the size of the DC jack that's compatible with your laptop. These jacks come in different sizes, particularly the barrel connector. I've discovered that most laptop manufacturers don't include the adapter jack size in their user manuals. You can Google your laptop charger and look for the adapter specifications from a reliable third-party website. Generally, a power supply with the same output rate should have the same jack size. The most accurate way to determine the correct adapter jack size is to measure it from your working laptop adapter. Using a caliper or ruler, measure the outside diameter and the whole diameter of your laptop DC jack. For the inner hole, you can also use a sharp cylinder object like a toothpick. Simply insert the toothpick into the hole and make a mark at the point where it meets the edge of the jack. Then measure the diameter of the toothpick at the marked point to determine the diameter of the inner hole. This measurement does not need to be exact, but it will give you a good estimate of the correct size. Once you have the measurement, you can compare it with the available USB-C adapters. Now we can select an adapter according to the measurement. For my laptop, the diameter is around 4 mm with a 1.75 mm inner hole. I would recommend this adapter. It has a power rating of 100 watts, which should be enough for most laptops. For the USB-C charger, you need to look for one that can output more than your laptop's power requirement. For my laptop, I need a charger of at least 45 watts, that included a power profile of at least 20 volts. Unlike purchasing regular USB chargers, you need to carefully look at its specification, to ensure that it will work with your laptop. Some supplier may advertise their charger with higher wattage, by combining all the port's output power. However, you need to look at the individual USB-C port's maximum output, especially for a charger with multiple ports. For example this one. It's advertised as 100 watts. But then look at its specification. The maximum output for a single USB port is only 30 watts. So this one will definitely not work with my laptop and also looking for the port's maximum voltage profile. For this charger, the maximum voltage for USB-C 2 and C3 is only 12 volts, which won't work with my laptop that required a voltage of 20 volts. Additionally, if you plan to use the charger with multiple devices at the same time, please keep in mind that for most multiport chargers, 
the maximum output power will drop when charging multiple devices simultaneously. Some suppliers may include this information in the description as well. Optionally, you can also check the PD versions supported by the charger. By the time I tape this, the latest version is PD 3.1, which can output up to 48 volts at 240 watts. I recommend using a charger with PD version 2 or above that has a more flexible voltage profile. All these specifications can also apply when you select a power bank for your laptop. For me, I choose this basis 100 watt power bank. It's a 20,000 milliamps power bank that can extend my laptop battery for a couple of hours. I choose it mainly because of its slim design that will fit nicely on my laptop case and the LCD that not only displays battery percentages, but also shows output voltage and remaining runtime. Moreover, when charging it also displays the estimated time until fully charged. The last thing to concern about is a USB cable. The modern USB-C cable is equipped with an e-marker chip that is needed to properly and safely achieve a higher wattage output. The cable that comes with the charger mostly included a chip and can handle wattage delivered by the adapter. But if you need extra cable, make sure that you pick a cable that included an e-marker chip and has higher wattage than your requirement. I recommended a 65 watt or 100 watt cable. It also has a PD adapter that came with a cable, like this one. It rates at 65 watts. I've tested and confirmed that it also works with my laptop. So that's all for the guide. I already included links to the component that I've been testing and working with my laptop in the description below. I hope this video will help you choose the right components to use with your laptop. And save you time and money. But please keep in mind that, no matter how carefully we look at those specifications, but some supplier may over-advertise their product. So it's a good idea, to double-check it with different sources, or choose a charger and cable from a well-known brand. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. I will be happy to help you out. And if you found this video helpful, please consider giving me a thumb up and subscribe to get an update for my future video. See you next time. Thank you for watching.